Hi, I'm author and speaker Robin Mead. This is the next video in my 10 Things God Wants You to Do Today series. We are on number five, Let It Go. You can find this video in my other videos, including my Hope, Healing, and Perseverance series from the book club for my book, Fierce Wholeness, on my YouTube channel. To find my channel, search under the hashtag Hope, Healing, and Perseverance, and please subscribe so you'll be notified the next time a teaching video comes out. My book, Fierce Wholeness, can be purchased on Amazon. When I was growing up, there were people in my family who consistently hurt me. Usually this hurt was not acknowledged, uh, and I, I was told my instincts about being hurt were wrong. Statements such as, she didn't mean it, she really loves you, or that isn't something to really get upset about, or you just didn't get the joke, were said to me over and over again until I doubted my instincts about being hurt. Now I understand that this is gaslighting. On the infrequent occasion when the hurt done to me was acknowledged, there was no actual recognition of wrongdoing or an apology, but I would receive a gift. I was expected to accept the gift without question, and there would be more, no more discussion about my hurt. The hurtful behavior would not be addressed and would happen again. If I hurt someone in my family, however, I was expected to admit I was wrong, apologize, and be consistently reminded that I had done this wrong. There was no acceptance of apologies, and no amount of restitution offered would ever be enough. I grew up going to church, and I had no idea what God intended forgiveness to be. Every Sunday, we recited 1 John 1, 8, and 9. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But I didn't get it. I didn't understand at a heart level how this applied to me. I thought everything was my fault and no redemption was possible. Now, if you had said to me, Robin, do you believe that Jesus died to redeem everyone but you? I would have said, of course not. That doesn't sound right. But I wasn't living in that truth. I was living in the truth I learned growing up. Everything was my fault. Even when others hurt me, it was my fault because I was not smart enough, too fat, worthless, asked too many questions, didn't have any sense, and this would never change. I thought I was beyond redemption. Though the Bible teaches that God is a forgiving God, but he is also just in punishing sin. We are sinful. We can't be sinless alone. We need the sacrifice of Christ to cover us to forgive us, to work to restore what sin has destroyed in our lives. When we ask for forgiveness, we acknowledge what we have done wrong and resolve to change. Through his grace and mercy, God then treats us as justified before him. Literally, it took me almost two decades to understand this in my heart, that the normal that I learned growing up is not how God works. If I confess my sin, God is faithful and just to forgive me my sin. Sending it as far away as the east is from the west into the depths of the sea, God lets go of the transgression. He removes it. He wipes it away. A sincere apology, a sincere effort to do things differently, that's it. And God offers not only forgiveness, but also help to overcome temptation and sin patterns when I asked for it. Because biblical forgiveness was difficult for me to grasp for myself, I had a tough time truly forgiving others, especially the members of my family who had hurt me so deeply. Letting go of that off those offenses seemed unfair. I wanted an apology. I wanted them to understand how much hurt they had caused me. I wanted justice. I felt like my childhood had been stolen from me and I wanted it back. I wanted, well, no amount of restitution would fill the void of pain that I felt. Nothing could bring my childhood back. These people apologizing and even changing would not rewrite history. God is the only one who could restore that hurt. Romans 12, 17 through 19 says, Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible... So far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, 
but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And forgiveness does not mean the relationship is automatically restored. I think that's an important point. Matthew 18, uh, verses 15 through 17 talks about this. You know, we should set boundaries with unhealthy behaviors in others. It's okay to say no thank you, or I need to think about that, or just no. It's okay to limit contact to keep from getting hurt again. It's okay to limit contact while trust is being rebuilt. This may look like limiting the length of visits, the topics for conversation, or maybe contact is only limited to writing letters. More separation creates a safer place for you to heal. And when you heal and really feel God's love deeply, it's easier to let offenses go. When we are obedient to forgive, when we offer the same forgiveness God gives us to those who have wronged us, God promises to restore the years destroyed by sin, that we will see the goodness, his goodness, in this life. I can testify the God of the universe is able to restore to you the years the locusts have eaten. I have seen it in my own eyes with my own life. Remember, faith is doing what God asks us to do, regardless of how we feel, because God promises a good result. I hope this helps. God bless.